Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick, illustrator for Gina K Designs, and I'm so grateful you could join me today. I have a really fun card that I'm going to share today that uses masking, and we're going to do some whimsical, what I call whimsical, watercoloring with a lot of water and a lot of paint to just kind of create this bright and vibrant floral card. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the supplies that I'm going to be using for today's card. I have all of these supplies here and they will be listed down below in the notes as well. I'm using two inks from Gina K. I'm using the Obsidian Amalgam Ink and I'm using Grass Green. I'm going to do a little something different with Grass Green. I've got this jewel picker here and I also have a number eight round brush for watercoloring. I have this really fun block. I'm loving these grip blocks from Gina K. I got them all. I'm super excited. I haven't bought a block in decades and I just love them. And I'm playing a lot now with these new sequins and embellishments from Gina K. I'm digging this Emerald City and I think it's going to be a really nice contrast to the project that we're working on today. I've got my tidy towel and some connect glue, of course. And I'm going to share a little bit about some new to me watercolors. And this is a set of watercolors from American Crafts. And this is the Paper Fashion watercolors that I just recently picked up. I also added two other watercolor watercolor pans inside of this tin. But the reason why I picked it up is because, I've, and I've had it for a while, I'm finally getting it out to try to play with it. But I really am digging these colors. And I have followed Katie Rogers for quite some time and I just really like these colors. They're bright, they're vibrant, they're fun for florals. And this is a really nice set to just do some really simple watercoloring. You can use any watercolors that you have in your stash. Absolutely. Okay, so let's dive into the paper and stamps. I've got the B Paper Company watercolor paper, the 100% cotton. This is my favorite. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that this is my favorite watercolor paper for paper crafting. And I've got a piece of the Gina K Designs black cardstock love the black cardstock. This is cut to an A2 size and my watercolor paper is cut to a four by five and a quarter. So all of the dimensions will be listed down below as well. So I'm using my stamp set with Gina K Designs called Woodland Whimsy. Now you could use any stamp set in your stash. You just need a flower and maybe some leaves and bits and baubles that you'd like to use. But any flower in your stash will work. And I'm just loving these envelopes that Gina has just released for your stamps. I'm just digging it. Finally got around to getting some. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with the smaller floral that's in the set. And we're going to create this laurel like look to it. So I'm going to go ahead and start stamping out the first flower and then I'm going to mask that off. So I'm using obsidian because it's perfect for watercoloring and I've also made a mask using Gina K Designs masking paper. So I've got that showing you a picture of that here. I've made the mask. I cut it out to the edge to edge with the flower and I'm just going to go ahead and stamp around that. So I'm going to put a flower on the left of that mask and a flower on the right of that mask. And it's just going to help give us that um, layered look without the the flower petals touching each other. And it's just going to give us that kind of laurel leaf look. So we've got that look of flowers coming forward and flowers going backwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same technique, but down just a little bit below. And I'm arcing the flowers a little bit. So we've got a little bit of an arc here. And I just eyeballed this, but if you really um, are concerned about getting that shape, you can easily just kind of pencil it in and use that as your guide. You can see that I don't have like a perfect little curve here, but I'm digging it. I've got some really nice space in the middle here for my sentiment. And I just love the way this came out. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put the mask back on 
and I'm going to apply, I'm going to stamp the leaf image where the mask is so that we get that impression that the leaf image is behind the flower. So I'm just masking that off uh, and I'm gonna do that top to bottom so that you can see that that leaf in the grass green is in the back of the flower and I'm digging it, I really like it. And here's why I'm just using the grass green because when we start to watercolor, that color is gonna mix with that grass green. It's gonna give us some really fun effects. And I'm loving, loving, loving this. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit more masking here, and I'm gonna just put that mask on that left petal, left floral, and I'm going to take a little bit of these berries and twigs and have that come out the edge of the flower so that we get a little bit more of the two flowers, the two flower sections, the top and the bottom kind of coming together a little bit. So we're just drawing our eye to bring those pieces a little closer to each other by adding the berries and the twigs. And it's just kind of fun. It just helps create that kind of cohesive look for the design. So you see how I kind of just tipped that berries and leaves in so that those two shapes are kind of close to each other. Yes, I love it. Okay, and it gives us a really nice positioning for our sentiment that's gonna go right in the center. And I'm just loving this. I'm gonna go ahead and get my mini Misty out. Now, I have found that when you use Obsidian on this Bee Paper Company watercolor paper, you really can get your sentiment or your images down in one pass because it's so dense and a rich, rich amalgam. But I just got out the Misty because I wanted my sentiment to be straight and I sometimes get it a little wonky. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp this down twice with the Obsidian, with the Misty. Okay, so now we're gonna get started with the water coloring. So I'm just using my number eight round brush and I'm dipping it in my water here and I am saturating this piece of watercolor paper. Now a little bit of the green from the grass green is just kind of tinging the paper a little bit, but that's okay. I'm dipping my brush in the, the watercolor paint and I'm just pulling up the pink, which is sort of like a quinacridone magenta color and I'm just putting it down on my mat here. Now watercolor, no matter what watercolor brand you use, when you put a lot of color down, and it dries, it's gonna to start to fade. So I'm going to be adding multiple layers of this color in with this wet and wet technique. So you can see I've got a little bit of this yellow that I'm gonna pop down in, and it all just looks like super vibrant and super messy. But this technique is called wet and wet. It's a super easy watercolor play technique that you can use to really get familiar with your colors, and really just understand how watercolor works and how it flows. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit here, um, this watercolor palette. I really, really dig these colors, so I really thought it would be fun to just kind of show you how um, nice they are. So they're really super vibrant. This is that quinacridone magenta color. And I wanna show you that when you add a lot of water, to the color, you can really change the value of this color from a really dark magenta, dark pink to a really, really light, really fun um, pink. So this is a really fun technique to use with the watercolors you have, creating a little bit of what I call a value scale. So you are adding the paint at full strength and then you're adding more water to the paint and just kind of drawing it out so that you can really see how the paint will work. And this is what I mean about getting your paints out and playing and kind of getting to understand how your watercolor works and how you can have some fun with it. So the more water you add to the pigment, to the color, you can see I'm breaking down the pigment here and I'm getting a lighter value of that violet color and it is gorgeous. So this is a really great set, really super fun and the colors are really super vibrant. Okay, so back to adding another layer. Now I let the watercolor 
um, dry in between. You can use your heat tool to kind of let, to heat set it a little bit to dry it in between. And I'm adding more water and adding more color on top. Now I've dried it out and you can see how much the color has faded back from that super, super vibrant color that you saw in the wet and wet technique. And that will happen with any watercolor brand. So now I'm just going in and doing a technique called glazing. So I'm just adding water to my brush and then applying, dipping it into my paint and then applying it to the project, to the flowers, random, fun. So we just kind of have a mishmash of color here and it's super wet and watercolory and it's a lot of fun. I just love it. Okay. So again, I dried it again and I'm adding my third layer here with the color in the palette that's more like an opera rose, which is sort of fluorescent. So I'm just kind of dipping back and forth and adding a lot of different colors just to jack up the vibrancy. When you layer colors and you let them dry in between, you can really jack up the vibrancy of the watercolor. Okay, so I'm going to add some finishing touches with the emerald sequins and this green sequin is really going to pull out that grass green color from the leaves and the berries i just love it okay let's take a final look at the card and i am digging it look at the grass green and when it mixed with the watercolor we got this whole different color going and it's just gorgeous i'm really really digging this card I hope you enjoyed today's card tutorial. It was so much fun to share it with you. Thanks so much for watching. Please consider sharing the joy by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. And I'm sharing more card and watercolor tutorial videos for your inspiration right here. So come on in and take a peek at my tutorials. I have a lot to share and I'll see you next time.